So I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, non-dual aspect of the whole realization process. I think this is one of the things with non-duality, with spirituality in general. It's this aspect that is made to be, I think, in some circles, it's made to be a little bit unnecessarily complicated. And I think the pointing around this can be very poetic at times. Um, I think by pointing people like that, um, it just unnecessarily obscures the kind of simplicity in the non-dual aspect of this. Non-dual meaning there's not two, there's no subject or object, there's just this, but we'll, we'll go into explaining that now in a minute. But I think a lot of <coughs> pointing these days, uh, a lot of books you read about this aspect can be very, very unnecessarily complicated. But there's uh, one person who I've read who is very, very clear on this and who's very direct in pointing towards this, um, that's Ken Wilbur. And, you know, Ken has very, has many theories on, on reality. I'm not going to get into all of them. And I don't, I don't necessarily agree with him on, on everything, but the way he points to non-duality, the way he points to the, the absence of a subject object, um, the, the subject object split, the way he points to it, I think is really clear. It's really direct. And even if you just take his words, just keep, go back and listen to this video. Maybe if you have had an initial awakening experience and you've been here for maybe a few years, maybe a few months, maybe then keep going back to this video and listening to it because this is the next step, if you will, um, is to really investigate that sense of self, that, that sense of location, that sense of you being in here, even if it's the pure sense of being that's somehow located in here. Uh, the next step is to investigate that investigate where is the witness the witness feels like i'm the witnesser of my experience i'm the witnesser of my thoughts if you've meditated for a long time you're the witnesser of all of this but it's time to actually investigate okay where is that witness and this is where you know the non-dual aspect comes in and it can feel very dry if you get stuck in the non in 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 the sort of witnesser of your experience this sort of vipassana um watcher of experience and really uh, you'll kind of get stuck in it, uh, feeling very distant from life if you end up staying here for a long time. And unfortunately, a lot of pointing towards this is very, very complicated and just doesn't resonate with people. But uh, that's why I'm going to read this. So we're going to read a quote by Ken Wilber, and then we can talk a little bit about it afterwards, um, because I think this is some of the <clears throat> the clearest pointing towards this this whole aspect that I've come across. There's a little bit of poetry in here as well towards the end. Um, but especially the the initial um, few paragraphs of this, um, it's fairly short, but the initial few paragraphs are, are very, very clear. And if you can just really feel into what he's saying, I think it'll make a, I think it'll come through in your experience if you just keep going back to it. So Ken says, you might begin by getting into this state of the witness. So the witnesser of your experience. <laughs> That is, you simply just rest in the pure observing awareness. You're not any object that can be seen. Not nature, not body, not thoughts. Just rest in that pure witnessing awareness. Something which we're all familiar with if you've been on this path long enough. And you can get a certain sensation or a certain feeling of that witnessing awareness. It has a certain, almost like a taste to it. A sensation of freedom, of release, of great expanse. Now, while you're resting in that state and sensing the witness as a great expanse and freedom, if you then look at, say, a mountain or any object that's in front of you, you might begin to notice that the sensation of the witness and the sensation of the mountain are the same sensation. Right there. A sensation isn't the best word to use, I don't think, but it's kind of the, we're using language here, but it, it does have a, the same sense. It's the, the, the sense of the witness and the sense of the visual field. There's no, there's no borderline between them. It just flows through onto everything. I'll, can, I'll keep reading. When you feel your pure self, self with a capital S, 
and you feel the mountain, they are absolutely the same feeling. In other words, the real world is not given to you twice. One out there, one in here. That is twiceness, or that twiceness is exactly the meaning of duality. Rather, the real world is given to you once, immediately. It is one feeling. It has one taste. It is utterly full in that at one taste. It is not severed into seer and seen, subject and object, fragment and fragment, fragment and fragmented. It is a singular of which the plural is unknown. You can taste the mountain. It is the same taste as yourself. It is not out there being reflected in here. The duality is not present in the immediateness of real experience. Real experience, immediate experience, before you slice it up, does not contain the duality. Real experience, reality itself, is non-dual. You are still you and the mountain is still the mountain, but you and the mountain are two sides of one and the same experience, which is the one and only reality at that point. If you relax into the present experience in that fashion, the separate self-sense will uncoil. You will stop standing back from life. You will not have experience. You will suddenly become all experience. You will not be in here looking out there. In here and out there are one. So you are no longer trapped in here. And if you're stuck in that witness, if you've been meditating a long time, witnessing everything, oh, I'm witnessing my emotions, I'm witnessing my thoughts, you, there is a, feel, a very dry feeling of being trapped in here. He continues to say, nearly done, when I rest in simple, clear, ever-present awareness, every object is its own subject. Every event sees itself, as it were, because I am now that event seeing itself. I'm not looking at the rainbow. I am the rainbow, which sees itself. I am not staring at the tree. I am the tree, which sees itself. The entire manifest world continues to arise, just as it is, except that all subjects and objects have disappeared. The mountain is still the mountain, but it is not an object being looked at. And I am not a separate subject staring at it. Both I and the mountain arise in simple, ever-present awareness. And we are both set free in that clearing. We are both liberated in that non-dual space. We are both enlightened in the opening that is ever-present awareness. That opening is free of the set-apart violence called subject and object, in here versus out there, self against other, me against the world. I've utterly lost face and discovered God in simple, ever-present awareness. When you are the witness of all objects and all objects arise in you, then you stand in utter freedom in the vast expanse of all space. In this simple one taste, the wind does not blow on you, it blows within you. The sun does not shine on you, it radiates from deep within your very being. When it rains, you are weeping. You can drink the Pacific Ocean in a single gulp and swallow the universe whole. Supernovas are born and die, all within your heart, and galaxies swirl endlessly where you thought your head was. And it is all as simple as the sound of a robin singing on a crystal clear dawn. And I think that's some of, some of the most beautiful pointing, but also some of the most simple pointing towards this entire aspect, um, this whole non, non-dual aspect. And it doesn't have to be any more complicated um, than especially those first few paragraphs. Is that if you just, again, this, this, is, this, this really is aimed at people who, haven't, who have sort of had um, that first awakening shift, but if you really feel... That, that, that pure sense of aliveness, that pure sense of being, or the pure sense of just just pure awareness that seems to be here somewhere. And you just feel that. Feel the expansiveness of that unbound consciousness. Just whatever that is, it's all these labels, awareness, consciousness, being, they're all, they're all incorrect in a way. They're, 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 they do violence to it. But if you just feel that, And then another question you could ask is, where does that end, awareness, and where does form, or where does the world, or where do sounds, or where do sensations, where do they begin? Where's the, where's the line, the dividing line between all of them? And it's just looking there, 
doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. It's just looking there. And you'll see that the feeling of the witness, the feeling of awareness, and almost like the feeling of the visual field, and the sensations and the sounds, they're, they're sort of made of that. Or they are that. They're no different than that. There's two sides of the, of, of the one experience. John Aston points to this beautifully as well. He says, when you look inside of so-called you, what do you find? You find experiencing. When you look outside of what supposedly you are, and what do you find? You find experiencing. And so inside and outside lose meaning here because it's just the continuous flow of ever-changing experiencing forms, shapes, sounds, colors. And so in that way, you find yourself everywhere. I used to get confused with non-duality because people would point to it um, and people would say, well, it feels like I'm here and there at the same time. And I just made no, it made no sense to me because I was identified with my perspective. So I was like, I was trying to imagine my perspective being here and my perspective being the door as well. And then my perspective being the light at the same time. And it made no sense because if you were to see the whole world through infinite perspectives, it would just look like a blob. It would just look like an incoherent blackness. You wouldn't be able to see anything if you were to see things from every direction. But that's not that's not what's meant. It's the only reason why you think that is because you're identified with the witness, the 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 perspective. But then there's no owner of that perspective. And you are not that perspective. Who you are is deeper than that, if you will. Who you are is that pure sense of 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 knowing that pure sense of uh, being, if you will, and that who you is who you are can't be limited anywhere. It can't be limited. It can't be. There's no edge to it. So in that way, there's no edge to you, and in that way, um, there's no subject. There's no object, and that's that's really that's what it means. That's what um, that's what the non-dual aspect means. And. To take a little bit further, maybe if you've reached that and you're kind of in that phase, um, to take it on a little bit further, um, so don't worry about this. Um, if people are just kind of working on what I just said and are thinking about what I just said, um, what I'm about to say here next, don't worry about it yet. It's fine. Um, but maybe if you have experienced non-duality and everything is this kind of um, Advaita everything is awareness there's there's no borderlines there's no subject there's no object everything is kind of subsumed into this into the mirror if you will it's like a, a you are the mirror and the, there's just the reflections on the mirror and the reflections of the mirror are, no, are none other than the mirror themselves they're, they're all examples you could use and maybe the world feels like that where there is no separation between things um, you do feel like everything is is made of being everything is made of awareness the next thing you can maybe look at is are you solidifying something? Are you solidifying awareness as like the substratum of everything or being as like the, the container of everything? And really ask yourself, is there actually a container? Is there is there just fast, open, spatial awareness and it just exists even if nothing else existed? Is there a ground of being that you can land on? <laughs> some stable container, something fixed. Investigate that in direct experience. And you might discover that there isn't actually a stable, solid ground from which it all arises or it's all made of. In fact, it's it's far more paradoxical than that. And there is no where to land it as such. It's like, almost like the... The sensations, if you feel them, they're not contained within awareness and made of awareness and, you know, contained in this big fishbowl called awareness or this infinite space called awareness. You'll feel that, or they don't come and they don't go in awareness. It's You feel like the sensation almost um, radiates from itself. It's almost like it's self-knowing. And you realize that awareness was never this great expansive container. Um, awareness and the object were kind of are synonyms the the form and awareness are two sides of the same coin um, they can't be separated there's no awareness without form and there's no form without awareness the, the two of them kind of lean on each other like that and everything is kind of self-knowing um, sensation is kind of born out of itself and dies into itself 
um, the visual field it's almost like it's it's self-knowing so um in that sense there's no there really is there, there's nowhere there's no there's no real identity in that um there's no there's nothing stable to land on there's no there's no more um infinite spatial awareness which you can relax back into and say ah oh, that's who i am there's nothing to cling for. The, the forms, the sensations, the sounds, the the visual field, the experience itself, what this is, I'll just use, the, it's an imperfect word, but I love using the word experiencing. Experiencing itself, the forms, the shapes, the colors, they're constantly changing, they're constantly in flux. They're, they're impermanent, they're moving, they're changing. So there's, there's none of that which you can latch onto. And the thought that you had where awareness was like the container and the holder of all of that, and everything was sort of made out of that container or that holder, that can be seen to be a simple thought. And you can actually let that, let, let that go. And then it's just... It's very strange, but very simple. Very, very simple. Um, just... Just things... Um, just things as they are, I guess. Right? There's no perfect way of talking about this, but... Um, yeah, what, what, what happens when you let go of that, the container of your experience and you're just left with experiencing? <laughs> no way of talking about it, but um, yeah, I hope that helps. It's just a clarification uh, of non duality, and then a after the non dual aspect comes kind of investigating fundamentally the root of identity, which for a lot of people, I'm guessing, will come down to awareness as a container. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps people. If you need to go back and rewatch this, um, I s highly recommend you do. Um, and definitely try and meditate on the words of Ken Wilber as well, um, because I think they're very clear and very direct. But um, yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs>